Entrepreneurs, I'm Elise Smith, your faith-based business coach, and you're tuned in to Divinely Driven Results on Transformation Talk Radio, where you learn and implement divine strategies for real results in your business. Now, as business owners, the lifeblood of our business is, of course, sales. We can't continue to run our business without that, but we can't get sales without our clients and customers. So where do you go to get your clients and customers? How familiar are you with that process? And are you leaving that up to chance, or are you really co-creating what you want with God and taking control? What would it be like for you to pick up a client or customer anywhere you go? What would that do for your business growth and your mindset to be able to find clients and customers everywhere? Well, ladies, that's exactly what we're going to talk about here today, how you can gain clients anywhere, even in some unlikely situations. So first off, we want to understand where our divine client or customer, our ideal client and customer might actually be. Remember that we're not just focused on anyone but we're really focused on our divine client and customer, that person who's ideal to work with, and that person that God wants us to work with. Because we should always keep in mind that when we speak to everyone, we really speak to no one. So we have to be really specific. So thinking about one specific person that you can help, which of course there that person is like thousands of other people like there out there, um, but just think about one ideal or divine client or customer that you've either worked with in the past or that you want to work with. Think about where you can find them. Where do they go to church? Where do they hang out? Where do they shop at? You know, the person who shops at Walmart compared to Target are two different types of people. And you may not find that person who maybe shops at Macy's shopping at Walmart, right? Where can you find them online? Are there specific Facebook groups that they're in? How about the social media platform? Someone who's on Instagram or Snapchat is completely different than someone who's on Facebook or LinkedIn. Where do they grow? What events do they like to attend? What seminars, what expos? Where are they gonna be found? I want you to get creative in this stage. In order to be able to really co-create with God and find clients anywhere, we want to really take that on and to understand where we can find them. So get creative. And I want you to do the 20 solutions method. Um, I love this concept and it is by um, Tracy, Brian Tracy, um, with the psychology of selling. He's amazing. You should check out his book. It's great. Um, but he talks about the 20 solutions method. And I actually bring that up one step further and say, you should do this with God. <laughs> but what you do is you write a question at the top of your page, which in this case is where do I find my divine client or customer? And then you push yourself to come up with 20 solutions on where you can find them. And I just kind of gave you a couple of hints where they go to church, where they hang out, where they shop, where you can find them online, where do they grow, that kind of thing. Um, and what's going to happen is that you're going to be able to come up with five or 10, even 10 might be a little bit of a stretch, but five pretty easily. But what I want you to do is really push yourself get to 20, no matter what it takes, and preferably all at the same time. And you're going to brainstorm with God, which is really awesome. So you're going to come up with a few, and then you're going to kind of just listen into what God has to tell you, and he's going to come up with a few, and you're going to write those down, and you are going to get to 20. So once you have this list of 20 ways that you can really be where your divine client is at, then you're not playing the game of chance anymore. You control the odds, which is going to open up you to receiving those contacts that you didn't even plan to meet. Almost like freebies that God gives you, just showing you that you're on the right path. So as much as you can control where you meet that divine client or customer, the more that, that God is going to bless you with other opportunities to meet them that maybe you didn't even realize were there. Um, and in fact, after the break, we will hear an amazing story of just that from my guest um, that I will be interviewing, Diana Grosbeck. She's a dating coach, so you aren't going to want to miss that. It's 
awesome. And you will actually get those three steps to be able to get clients anywhere. But let's talk about this here for just a few more minutes. Um, <laughs> you want to like get on my bad side and, and like really um, push a button with me, that is to talk about the law of attraction without any action. Oh, it drives me nuts when people are, are saying, okay, I'm summoning X amount of dollars in my bank account and it's going to be there tomorrow. Okay. Well, what did you do to bring that money to you? Because it's not just going to automatically appear. God doesn't work that way. Yes, he provides what we need when we need it, when we take action. The law of attraction doesn't work unless we take action. Um, and so what are you going to do to take action, to create those scenarios, to gain those clients so that you can be more open to those freebies that God wants to give you, to those opportunities that pop up and you're like, oh, I didn't even plan that, but that person was looking for me. Um, so we can wish for things all day long, but if we aren't taking action, then it's not going to come to us. So how are you going to take action on the path that leads you to gaining more clients and customers that you seek? Maybe you need to set a goal for yourself of networking events that you can attend this month. That's one of the best ways to meet people um, is networking events. So you can easily go on Google or Meetup or Eventbrite. I mean, there's so many different ways to find networking events in your area. Um, and if you're in Utah, check out Faithful Ladypreneurs. <laughs> but um, networking events is a great option. Um, what Facebook groups are you going to join this week and to start interacting and posting and commenting and reaching out to those people? That way you are taking action on creating what you really want. How many new friends in your niche are you going to reach out to online? One of the best things about Facebook Messenger is that you get to control how many prospects you contact every single day. And I'm not talking about the, hey, I thought you would be um, interested in my Facebook page, so even though we've never had a conversation, I'm gonna go ahead and send that to you. <laughs> but I'm talking about building real relationships with people, adding value in those conversations, and then leading them to your offer if it makes sense for them, right? Um, how many of those conversations are you gonna start this this week because when we take that action then the Lord will automatically bless us um, it's just like with with um, sowing seeds and reaping what we sow right we've got to be able to sow those seeds before we can reap um, okay and then the last thing I want to talk about here before we get to Diana's amazing interview um, and you guys are gonna love this because each week we're now going to interview um, a woman of faith who is also an entrepreneur. And you're gonna to get to know their story and really understand and get some amazing tidbits of what helped them and how it can help you. So can't wait for that. But the last part here is open your mouth, right? If you are either in a situation that you planned to, to meet someone, or you are just going to the place where you feel led to be and you're following the spirit and doing so, then the next thing you need to do is open your mouth. <laughs> um, I cannot tell you how many, um, how many different things I've been to when I was my shy person <laughs> um, that I just sat in the corner and didn't talk to anyone, just like waiting for the time to pass by at parties and being that wallflower and not talking to a single person. Um, but if we open our mouth, the Lord really will give us what we need. Um, there's a couple of scriptures for this, and I love it. So Psalms 81, 10, it says, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. Isn't that so cool that if we open our mouth, not even just open it, but open it wide, meaning we really declare what we have to share with the world, then he will fill it. He will tell us, he will give us what we need to say to be able to best serve that person that's right in front of us. And then Exodus 4.12 says, Now therefore go, and I will be thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. So it may not be an instantaneous, I'm going to open my mouth and everything's going to, you know, butterflies and roses and <laughs> rainbows are going to fly out of it. And that person's going to be like, yes, here's my checkbook, right? 
Uh, sometimes it'd be nice if that's how it worked. But the Lord will teach us what we need to say if we are opening our mouth, if we are taking action, if we are in the places that he wants us to be in. And then we take that next step and we open our mouth and tell them proudly who we are, what we do, and how it can serve them, then we really can pick up clients and really serve clients anywhere that we're at. It is a powerful concept. Um, so yeah, so that is what we're going to talk about here today with Diana here in just a few minutes after this break. But before we do, um, if you are struggling with maybe coming up with a really solid introduction that's focused on the other person as opposed to yourself, right? Because um, this is not our time to stand up on a soapbox and talk about ourselves. It is talking about who we are and what we do in the form of helping the other person. And we know that it's going to help them because we've already asked certain questions to be able to determine that that's what they need, right? We're the solution that they're looking for. So if you are struggling with putting your introduction together, or maybe you are struggling with really coming up with a very specific niche, um, maybe you're used to talking to everyone and so your voice, of course, is getting lost because you're really talking to no one. Um, or maybe you are having a hard time finding out where your divine client is. Any of these things, I want to hop on a call with you. So I am actually offering a free 30-minute coaching strategy call for us to be able to uncover what is holding you back in your business right now. And at the end of this call, you are going to leave with three steps you can take that are customized to you to start growing your business today in the Lord's way. So um, all you do is you go to divinelydrivenresults.com forward slash uh, well, actually, you'll go to divinelydrivenresults.com and that very first link will actually say book a strategy session. And go ahead and get on my calendar because this is the time to do it. Take action so that you can find those clients and customers anywhere. So don't go anywhere. We are actually going to be right back with Diana Grosbeck, um, where we're going to learn more about her, her story, and how she can find clients anywhere. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next time. Hi, ladypreneurs. I'm Elise Smith, your faith-based business coach, and you're tuned in to Divinely Driven Results on Transformation Talk Radio, where you learn and implement divine strategies for real results in your business. Just like we talked about right before the break, we are going to dive more into the three tips on how to get clients anywhere. And I am so excited to introduce you to my friend and an amazing coach herself, Diana Grosbeck. Um, she is a dating and relationship coach and matchmaker. So Diana, please tell us about yourself and what you do. Yeah, thanks so much, Elise. It's so great to be here. So like you said, I'm a dating and relationship coach. I love helping singles find love and be confident in themselves to find healthy relationships and help couples create more passion and fulfillment in their current relationships. Oh, we all need that for sure. <laughs> yeah. That is so great. So how, how did the Lord lead you into this? I mean, I think some people really wonder about their purpose and how they should act on that. And I think you are a perfect example of that. So please tell us your story. Well, thanks, Elise. Of course. Well, you know, marriage for me is a huge value of mine. And I actually, um, I think it's that way because of it's, it's also a, a, religious value of mine. And I, you know, after I got married, I was really contemplating what I wanted to do with my life. And at the time I was in another career and I, I got to this point where I was like, you know what, I don't think that I am doing what I need to be doing with my life. And I know that there's so much more. And it was really at that point that it kind of hit me that I needed to help other people create the results that I had in my life. Um, in my relationship that I had at that point. And so, you know, I, I decided to completely uh, do a 180 and, and switch careers and go back to school and get a coaching degree and, and start helping singles find those healthy relationships and create healthy ideas of relationships because mm -hmm. I see how important it is and I see how 
how much we struggle in society when it comes to relationships and, and when it comes to, um, you know, breaking up families. And I've seen so much of that in my life. And I really wanted to um, first create that for myself and set the example and then reach out and, and help other people. Awesome. Oh, that is so cool. Um, one of the things that you just said that stood out to me is that you have a really strong value of family. Um, and so, you know, as the entrepreneurs that are listening to this right now, really going with your values is one of the best ways to honor that purpose that God has given you and to follow that. So that is so awesome. So yeah. I'm sure as a coach that um, you experience all the same ups and downs as every single entrepreneur out there. Um, and one of those things is trying to identify and um, really find those clients that you are meant to serve. So tell us, we are dying to know here, what are your three tips to getting clients anywhere? Because we could all use that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, let me tell you, um, so there was one time and, and I told you I went back to school uh, when I was changing careers and I was actually in a, a grad school prep class and we had a guest speaker and we were working on our elevator pitches and he was asking for a volunteer and of course the class was silent you know nobody <laughs> wanted to volunteer um and me always being someone that pushes myself out of my comfort zone of course i'm in entrepreneurship um, that's kind of what we do on a regular basis and so i'm like well sure of course um and the the, the guest speaker that was there he he said Oh, don't worry, you're not going to regret this. Well, it was funny because, of course, as I'm talking about being a dating coach and a matchmaker and all these things, mm -hmm. um, you know, I sit down, we finish the rest of class. And as I was leaving class, I had a, a girl follow me out and she just had this wide eye look on her face. And, and she's like, oh my gosh, I have been praying to find out what my next step is when it comes to dating. And she's like, I need to work with you. Like, I know that now that that's my next step and she didn't know anything about me, but of course, you know, we, we, um, I, I was leaving class early. I had to get somewhere. And so, so I set up a call and I was like, you know what, let's chat. Um, why don't we chat tomorrow and let's get it on the schedule. And, um, and so what I wanted to kind of say to other entrepreneurs is know what your elevator pitch is, know what you stand for, know how to present yourself, and then be willing to share it. So be willing to put yourself out of your comfort zone, be willing to share it at any point in time. You never know where that person is that you get to serve next, where that person is that, that God is, is sending you to serve, and who has been praying for you. Um, and then be comfortable and confident enough to take them to the next step once you meet them. Yes. Oh, I hope you guys got that because that is gold. Um, you should be writing this down, memorizing it. Um, and, you know, it's so interesting because you see that same thing in the scriptures, right? You think about the apostles that went out and shared the gospel. One, they had to know what they stand for. Um, and they had to know what that message is that they're trying to share. So just like you talked about, you have to know that elevator pitch um, and really know how you can talk about about yourself and what you do in a way that's really in it for the other person, focused on the other person. Because if you, you know, we all hear it, right? Where you're at networking events or something like that, and it's like all about me the whole time. I'm just sitting there talking about me. And you're thinking to yourself, what is in it for me? That's how we're all tuned into like WIIFM station. What's in it for me radio, right? Yeah. And so for you to be able to speak to her and her needs, that is amazing. Um, so yeah, that's what I was thinking as you were talking about that is, you know, the, the apostles, they knew what their pitch was essentially. Um, so for all you listeners out there, make sure you know what your pitch is, who you are and what you do. Just like Diana did a great job of that at the beginning of this section. Um, so then the next step is be willing to share anytime, right? That's right, so cool. Yeah. I bet you didn't have any idea <laughs> that you volunteering in your class was going to no, lead you a client. No idea. And you know, I will have to tell you, um, not only did I work with her, but she referred her friend and I worked with her friend as well for the next year. And so oh. just from me getting up and not being afraid of sharing my message, um, I was able to help two people. Yes, absolutely. And so, you know, just like in the scriptures that you have to open up your mouth, 
right? Um, if you aren't willing to say something or in your case volunteer, because you never know when that opportunity is going to come up, then then absolutely it's not it's not going to happen. That person probably would never have known that you're an amazing coach if you hadn't had put yourself out there. So, oh, golden. And then your third step, um, talk to us about the confidence that you have in order to be able to lead them to that next step you were just talking about. Yeah, I think so often in, and, and we're going to say the sales process because this is going to, this is all part of, you know, selling your services. But so often, um, especially if we aren't comfortable and confident in what we do, we have this attitude of, well, you know, if they're interested, they're going to buy. But what we don't realize is that people need their hands held and they need to be kind of brought to the next step. And it's, it's that whole assuming the sale, but it's, it's not doing it in a way where we're, where we're trying to, um, I don't know, you know, scam people out of money where we're trying to influence them unethically. It's that people literally need us to hold their hands and they want to be taken to the next step. They want to be sold to. So when we talk about sales, it's not this, um, you know, negative thing. It's something that we have to do in order to serve people and just bring them to the next step and get them, you know, scheduled for a call. Yeah, exactly. So that's what you offered her was a, a consultation or a coaching call. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good, good. That's so awesome. Did you have that in your mind when you were going into that room that if I do meet someone, I'm going to offer them a coaching call or was that more following the spirit? No, yeah, that, that really was just um, taking, taking that opportunity that was in front of me and really wanting to help this person who, who told me that she had been praying for that. Yeah, I know. It gives me chills every time you say that. Because <laughs> there, are, there are people literally right now praying to meet every single one of these listeners. Um, and the only way that that's going to happen is if you know your pitch, right? If you can say that, if you can have that confidence to lead them to that next step in your sales process and for you to be able to willing to share any time where you're at, right? Yeah, of that course. That is so powerful. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and I think we actually got a bonus tip out of you today in your story because I noticed mm -hmm. that you had said, I got out of my comfort zone. Tell mm -hmm. us about that. Oh my gosh. Well, of course, being an entrepreneur, <laughs> like I said, um, I am constantly putting myself out of my comfort zone, like on a daily basis. And so it's one of those things where I've challenged myself to be comfortable being uncomfortable like this is just the norm you know and so it's it's just knowing the things that 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 god is wanting for me in my business and not being afraid to take action and saying okay i know that i have to uh get on stage and speak to a group of people so i'm not going to let that stop me i'm not going to let that slow me down um because my desire for what i do is stronger than the fears that i have to do it Oh, can you repeat that? I love that. Your desire what? Yeah. The desire that I have for what I do is stronger than the fear that I have. Yes. Oh, good tidbits here today. I love it. Um, and I mean, that's exactly right. Like success is out of your comfort zone and we need to get comfortable with being out of our comfort zone for sure. Um, great, great stuff. And I was thinking about, as you were talking about this, that um, inspiration really only comes when we take action. So we can pray all we want for clients, but if we're not out there seizing the moment that God has given us and recognizing that moment and leading them to that next step in our sales process for their benefit, then it's not going to happen. Oh, perfect. Well, good. So <laughs> yeah. tell us, um, how do you stay close to your God um, so you can continue to receive that guidance? How do you keep him in your business? Well, I love that you say that we receive inspiration when we're taking action and when we have momentum. And so um, it's through that momentum, it's through that action that I feel like I receive inspiration for my next step. And um, I, I do have another business project that I'm working on. So I run a women's group um, in addition to doing coaching. And the way that it all came about was so divinely guided. And, um, and the way that pieces fell into place, but they only happened because 
I was in motion and I was already in, in the action of serving people and, you know, who do I get to serve now? Who are my next clients? And, um, and just the connections that I made. And so I will say this, it's, um, you know, we can't be successful alone. And um, Tony Child, he says, there's no such thing as creation. There's only co-creation. So we co-create with other people. We co-create with God, especially, and we can't create alone. So there's nothing that we can create. We can't have any success alone. And so it takes God or it takes other people and God in order to make those, those things a reality. Oh, yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Well, I hope that you guys have been well fed by this conversation here today. Um, Diana is a shining example of what you can accomplish when you are partnering with God. Um, so thank you so much for being here, thank Diana. Um, and if you want more of Diana, come join Faithful Ladypreneurs Facebook group because later this week here, we're talking the first week of March, 2020. Um, she is going to be doing a live Facebook video to pour more into you guys. So if you like what you're listening to here, come join us there. Um, she is also going to be possibly offering something on Friday. So we'll kind of watch for that um, and see how that goes. But Diana, if they want more information about you, where can they go to find you? Yeah, so social media is great. Um, on Instagram, Love Coach Diana. Um, on Facebook, we have our Ladies in Action Utah page. If you are in Utah and you want to come and join our events, um, feel free to visit us at Ladies in Action Utah. Um, and also add me as a friend, Diana Grosbeck, on Facebook. Yeah, for sure. She's amazing. You guys are going to want to know her. So thank you so much for your time today and all of the words of wisdom that you have shared and just being that example for all of us to follow. So thanks ladies for joining us today and we will catch you next time on Divinely Driven Results.